Hi everyone, this video is going to be an overview of how to go about supervised and unsupervised network intrusion detection classification on the UNSWNB15 data set. Uh, you can find a code on my YouTube repository and for the videos I'll be making in the future, they will be available in my cybersecurity slash intrusion detection repository. Uh, I will in the future be uh, covering categor uh, categorical anomaly detection in unsupervised manner with uh, autoencoders, regular unsupervised anomaly detection, uh, feature, detects feature selection with a neural network, as well as just regular machine learning, but those will be in their own individual uh, videos. So without any further ado, let's begin. So we start off by uh, importing the quite basic stuff that I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, I grabbed a data set from some guy's uh, GitHub so I don't have to bother hosting it myself. So we start off by just uh, listing out the contamination, which means the portion of our data which is anomalous. So what we find here is that our normal divided by our uh, non-malicious activity ends up being about 0.3 or 0.44 for our test data set. What this means is the portion of our data set which is non-malicious is 0.36 meaning that malicious data is in the majority which is quite an interesting and unrealistic scenario which this data set presents because in real life your non-malicious data will be over majority of your data you would expect. So anyways we have six types of uh, categories. One of them is uh, malicious, but the rest of them is, uh, so one of them is normal, but the rest of them is malicious. And this will end up being uh, quite interesting. Nine types of malicious attacks and one type of uh, normal activity. So uh, continuing forward, I in uh, the past had made uh, everything into here you can see I combined all the data just so I could do this uh, feature exploration but now I combine it back together and one interesting thing I did was I made a test set 75% of the total data this is because these data sets are absolutely huge and uh, it's going to be a computational hassle to run unsupervised anomaly detection on this much data. When I was on my own internship, I ran into the same problem. I quite literally had nearly unlimited data, so I quite literally had to limit my training set. So just to quickly do some visualization, a T-SNAS of two dimensionality looks like the following, while a T-SNAS of three dimensions looks like this. I suspect this dot right here might be uh, imputing uh, missing data. Anyways, PCA looks like this interesting diamond shape and you can see there are some uh, values right here at 1, negative 2 and positive 2 which is quite interesting. I guess that's categorical data. In theory, we shouldn't be using PCA for categorical data but really who cares? This isn't a dimensionality reduction exercise anyways. So continuing forward, we can see PCA3 looks a bit interesting. Anyways, so let's say we get a bunch of uh, classifiers. We have uh, decision tree classifier, random forest, exo trees, XGB, and light GBM. And we run this and we find that doing supervised classification, we get approximately low 80s accuracy. Uh, furthermore, we can do have some code to actually intelligently remove uh, the data 
the classifiers which are of subpar performance. So when we do our ensemble road classifier, we find that we have a relatively high accuracy, meaning that we got rid of decision trees which was our subpar performance. Actually, in this case, we didn't get rid of decision tree, but if decision tree was sufficiently bad, then it stands to reason that we actually would have gotten rid of them. This print statement and this print statement are for these, this and this respectively. In this case, we didn't get rid of them, but in another case, we could have, depending on how bad it actually is, perhaps you wish to make this into subtract off the variance minus 2. Anyways, there's no point in me explaining it. It'll be faster if you guys were to just read the code. Anyways, here's the ROC curve. And let's continue on to our unsupervised anomaly detection. You can see that we get some based estimators, KNN, least outlier factors, cluster-based least outlier factor, angle-based anomaly detection, and this is kind of like an ensemble of all of these. Realistically speaking, the documentation is a lot better than whatever I could possibly explain to you guys, and the GitHub's are right here. So, let's continue. We run this code, and we go down, and we find that we have an accuracy of 53%, which isn't very impressive. This one is very computationally expensive, so I had skipped it. A uh, OCSVM, which stands for One Class Support Vector Machine, which is also an SK loan, has a 47% uh, accuracy. Furthermore, we can try some uh, newer network based methods from uh, the library for PYOD, which stands for P Python Outlier Detection Toolkit. And we find that our accuracy is 44% which isn't the best but really that's just the nature of the problem and this is just some uh, gibberish code for benchmarking that doesn't really matter so my explanation of my code may not have been the best but hopefully this will uh, if this fits your use case I would recommend that you look at the code on my githubs in particular it is right over here and hopefully you can uh, substitute your own data set and it will help you out anyways that's it for today good luck with whatever you're doing